Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> So any idea what is that we are going to learn today? Power BI, Power BI okay. Um, anyone did kind of any research about this tool? No? Online participants, do you know what is Power BI? It's a tool to create uh, dashboards where we can uh, know the uh, act we can extract the information from the data. Mm -hmm. It's a tool to create the dashboards and uh, we can, yeah, reports we can create, yeah. visual presentations. Okay. Why do we need to visualize the data? Are we not are we not happy with the tables and numbers? to easily understand yeah it is recommended to present the data in the form of visuals right okay yeah power bi is a self-service business intelligence tool we try to understand how to create the reports and dashboards uh, for this uh, the recommendation is someone should have some basic understanding of uh, excel formulas for sure and sql right so as SQL uh, helps us in terms of building, uh, I mean, the data modeling concepts, most of them, they are in line with the SQL concepts also. So I'll try to cover the SQL concepts once again before uh, going for the data modeling concepts in uh, Power BI. Anyone who is uh, fairly new to SQL, no need to worry. But anyone who got some idea about SQL, you can answer these questions, OK? All right. Um, so. We understood that Power BI is a data visualization tool using which we can create the reports and dashboards. Okay, excellent. Excel also can do that. Yes or no? Mm, then why do we need Power BI kind of a tool? It has more advanced features and it also can do ETL. Okay. ETL, extract, transform, load. We'll, uh, we'll do that as part of our Power Query sessions. Okay, what else? It can handle very large data at once. Large data sets is another advantage. Excel has a limitation, right? Every sheet can handle only about uh, 1 million rows. To be specific, 10,48,576 rows or 1 million uh, uh, rows, you can say easily. Um, but Power BI doesn't have that kind of a limitation any number of rows you can load, but there are licenses available, pro license, premium per user subscri subscription or a premium capacity. As a pro user, I'll talk about licensing also as part of the sessions. As a pro user, you can only upload up to one GB data set onto the Power BI service. We'll, we'll take you through, okay, what is that one GB data set and all later, but understand that there are uh, limitations uh, in Power BI, but that is uh, you know way too high you know, millions of records you can store in Power BI reports. But Excel has, <coughs> each sheet has 1 million records limitation, right? We, just, we know that. All right, any other? Why not Excel for every reporting need? Why Power BI? Why do we need Power BI? Appending the tables, okay, what else? It is an AI tool. We just load the data and it automatically creates relationship between multiple tables and give us the visualizations. Right. It has a few AI features also in which, uh, uh, you know, it can build the data models automatically using the primary key, foreign key and all. That is, yeah, 
uh, we'll see that. And custom visuals uh, is another thing what we can do. Custom uh, visuals, something can be downloaded and uh, we can visualize them. Okay, what else? Yeah, pricing wise, when it is compared with other uh, <clears throat> visualization tools like Tableau and ClickSense, Power BI that comes at an affordable price. We'll also talk about licensing and pricing. There I'll discuss. Excellent. So I think uh, most of you got some uh, idea about uh, what is Power BI, but yeah, I'll take you through anyways, right from the scratch, what is Power BI. And uh, before uh, getting into Power BI, I would like to once again show you this visual. So we are in the reporting layer. It could be any reports development or dashboards and all. We can use any of the tools like Excel or SAP BOBI, Crystal Reports. Along with that, you can also use Power BI, right? This is a, a visual, a visual analytics tool, you can say. And you know this very well. All our data is stored inside databases. So we worked with uh, SQL Server database earlier, right? And we also can consider other few data sources. Maybe it could be it could be Excel or CSV or a web page or different data sources can be there. But most of the organizations, they store the data inside a database. So to interact with the database, uh, we need to know how to interact with the server using a language called SQL. So as part of this training program, I'll once again, uh, you know, repeat the SQL fundamentals. What is the primary key, foreign key? how these things can be used uh, in the data modeling and data visualization, right? So, so many topics are there. They, they look very much uh, similar, like SQL topics. We do joins in SQL. We do relationships in Power BI. We do, uh, you know, merge in Power Query, similar concepts. We do aggregations in SQL. The same uh, aggregations are possible either in Power Query or Power BI. So, we'll see that step by step. So as part of the reporting layer, we are going to le learn Power BI, and I'll uh, cover a few of the SQL concepts and how to interact with the databases. I'll show you as part of this. And uh, this is a, a training program designed to cover both Power BI desktop and Power BI service. There are uh, two things that we need to understand here. Power BI desktop is the report development environment. Power BI service is to publish the reports. So we develop the reports in Power BI desktop and we publish them onto the Power BI service, which is like a cloud-based uh, service. Um, and uh, anyone with the user ID and password, they can log into that uh, platform and they can view the reports from any place. Usually in the traditional reporting, like in Excel reports and all, if uh, you create a report and if you want uh, your client to see the report, what is that you do? You attach it to the email and you send it to the client, right? The client then opens it and sees that. But here you don't need to send any emails. Uh, you know, it's just that you develop the report and there is a publish option. You publish it and your client can directly see that, right? So those kind of features are there as part of Power BI service. So two components are there. Mainly we'll be focusing on one is the development environment, which is Power BI desktop. The other one is the publishing part, the server part, which is Power BI service, right? Both of them are covered inside in this training program. You no need to specially learn any uh, service related concepts. It is already part of this training only. Okay, so I'll cover both of them. And uh, coming to this uh, training schedule, this is uh, for a uh, runs for about uh, uh, thirty hours. Okay, thirty thirty two hours. Uh, in which we'll do a couple of projects and there is one final uh, project for you and you need to do it and submit. Uh, we'll give you like a one week's time and towards the end I'm talking about one week's time you will get and you will have to submit the project. Client requirement documentation will share and you will have to go through, understand what client is looking for and design the reports. Okay, as per the requirements mentioned in the documentation. Okay, that is uh, uh, how you know the entire training program runs about a 30, 32 hours of training program, plus a couple of projects during the training and one post assessment training uh, project is there and you will have to complete that and uh, share it in the form of a PDF. We'll also show you how you can export your report to PDF format, right? Fine then, so training timings, uh, we start around uh, 2.40. 
Okay, you can join by 2 30. 2 40ish we uh, start around and up to 4 30. So, mostly anyone is uh, into US shift or UK shift, I think you can still manage these timings. Um, yeah, so yeah, US shift uh, is you, you know, that, that usually starts around 5 30, 6 o'clock in the evening. So, that may be useful for the you know online mm -hmm. participants. Okay, so the sessions run from Monday to Saturday. Sunday only the break and any major festival is there during the week, then it's going to be a holiday. But otherwise, we'll do Monday to Saturday. Okay. Session recordings, same like uh, SQL uh, recordings you all got, got access to it. Similarly, Power BI also will all be added to the Power BI sessions recording. And whatever the material I'm showing on my screen will be shared uh, in the Google Drive and you can download and whatever the things that we discuss, you can also practice using the same files. Okay, session recordings will be shared as well as the material package. And whenever you are practicing, if you get any doubt, you can always watch that uh, recording. And remember this recording after the training program, it will be available only for 30 days, one month, okay? You got a question, why not lifelong? Right, what is stopping you to give us uh, a lifelong validity? I'll tell you one thing. My own experience, I can tell you, okay? I, I bought a course in uh, 2019. It's, if, if I remember it right, 2019, I bought a course, okay? And which is a lifetime valid, right? And which is very much needed also for me. This is about uh, visual analytics only, but of course, I learned... Uh, due to you know, other few things I had, that I had to present to my client. So I, I learned all those topics, but my intention was to complete the course and learn more about the data visualization and all, but I somehow learned it. But the uh, thing is that the course, uh, I think I completed only what, 20% maybe? I bought that course in 2019. You know, it's a live example from my side. <laughs> You know, why you did not complete watching all those things? It's very simple because they said lifelong valid. And I was just thinking like, you know, I got enough time and I'll watch it later. Every time I'm just postponing it because there is no a deadline for it. It's as simple as that. You know, the exams, most of the exams, the way I wrote them is first of all, I booked the slot. Then I started practicing. There is no other way, right? Otherwise, you know, if you fail the exam, you will lose like eight, 9,000 rupees or... That's how it worked well, because we all find, uh, you know, taking out time is really challenging, right? Unless there is a set target and you will have to complete so-and-so time frame, then unless you don't have that, then it is like a continuous thing. You, you can't learn anything. So that's the reason we kept like one month. One month is really very much enough if you want to master this tool. After the training program, you will still get one more month. Keep that in mind. If we can, uh, if we give, of course, the data maintenance also not that easy from our side to keep like lifetime validity. But one month, you will have to stick to it, learn it, okay? So whatever is there uh, during the course, please learn, practice, and, you know, make sure those, those concepts are registered in your mind. You will have to practice. Clear? All right. So schedule your clear, right? What is it you are going to learn? Two main things that we discussed. What are they? Power BI desktop and Power BI service. Service and all, usually that is done by the admins, but we learn those concepts also. You never know. Let's say there is a Power BI role and they also require admin, uh, you know, kind of responsibilities to be performed by the candidate. Then you, you shouldn't say like, I don't know admin part, right? So that's the reason we are covering both of them, both development part as well as the administration part. Clear? Usually Tableau, uh, you know, how they offer is uh, Tableau desktop for the developers. There is one training program for that means there is another training program, two different training programs. But as part of this, I'll cover both of them in one. Okay. All right. So coming to the course contents. We'll start with uh, what is business intelligence and why is it needed? Okay. So history of uh, Power BI and the different components inside, right? How this came into market, when it was uh, released, okay? We'll cover a few demo, uh, I mean, a few sample reports. Okay. After that, once you get some understanding about what is Power BI and how it is useful, our first step starts getting the data. The data you can get from any source. 
it can be from Excel or a SQL or a web page or a Teradata, Sybase, DB2, SAP HANA, Access, Oracle, right, PostgreSQL, whatnot. Almost every connector is available. Just that uh, you just show the source and connect to it and uh, get the data into your Power BI report. So getting the data is our first step. So there we learn ETL process also. What is ETL? Right, extract, transform, transform load. 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 Perfect. So extract, transform, load activities we do using the Power Query editor. As part of Power Query, we learn M query language, mashup language. I'll, I'll take you through. I'm just only telling, uh, taking you through this uh, course contents, but step by step we do. Okay, as part of this uh, Power Query, we also try to understand how you can automate your repetitive tasks every day if you need to gather the data from multiple sources and create one, uh, one uh, consolidated data set. You don't need to do that manually. Okay, you set up the process and you just execute it uh, every now and then, you know, uh, you need it, you just refresh it. It will go through all that uh, steps and it will give you the final output. This is another advantage with Power Query. Power Query using this, uh, <clears throat> you can automate your data related tasks. Okay, we'll see that. And as part of this, we'll, we'll deal with different sources, Excel files, CSV, folders, SQL access, website, right? What is load and what is direct query, appending, merging, filtering, grouping, so many things are there. So understand this, the raw data, whatever we get into our Power Query, uh, you know, editor, most of the times in the real time, most of the times, the data that you get into the report or into the Power Query editor, that is not clean data. You will have to clean it. There are so many functions. There are so many, you know, steps that will have that you will have to apply on the data sets to clean them. Sometimes the names may be different. Sometimes extra characters may be there. Extra spaces may be there. Spellings may not match. Or unnecessary rows may be getting into your data. Right? So many things would be there and you need to clean up the data and transform the data into the required shape. That is what we will do as part of our query editor. Okay? So that is our uh, first step. Get data, transform data. Once the data is inside uh, your Power BI report, then we will have to uh, build data models. Data models, uh, you know, you know the joins, right? From uh, table to table, how primary key, foreign key can be related. Same thing we do as part of Power BI data modeling. We build the relationships there using the primary keys and foreign keys so that the data will flow from one table to the other table and you can visualize the data. As part of data modeling, we talk about uh, how to build the relationships, how to you know build the data models, hiding the columns, hiding the tables, sorting, formatting, hierarchy, so many things are there. One of those very, very important thing that we learn here is a date table. Date table. Uh, there you get a question, already I have the, all the required data, right? I can create a report, right? Why do I need a date table? Understand that in the business uh, transactions, you may or may not have transactions every day. Yes or no? Let's say if you are into FMCG, every day FMCG, you know, right? Never heard? Uh, what is FMCG online? What is FMCG? Fast moving consumer goods. Fast moving consumer goods, okay. FMCG, something like uh, toothpaste, soaps, all that stuff is part of FMCG and uh, more number of sales and uh, you see a lot of turnover, right? So FMCG kind of a business, yeah, every day they can have a transaction. But if you are selling uh, cars, let's say Bench, okay, Bench uh, showroom or a BMW, then uh, can you expect every day they can sell one car at least? No. If they don't uh, sell any car for that day, the transactions date will be missing in the transactions table. When you want to do the weekly averages, monthly averages and all the numbers will go wrong. Why? Because the transaction date itself is, you know, will be missing. So what we will do is that we will uh, build a date table, whether the dates are present in the transactions table or not, it doesn't care. It will give you the full list of dates so that every date will be used in your calculations. So we'll see that there as part of this, we'll also talk about what is time intelligence functions. Okay, after building the date table, very, very, very useful. I'll tell you one thing. If uh, dates are missing in the transactions table, when you want to take an average of a week, understand this, if a date is missing in the transaction table, what is the number you should consider there? 
zero. But in the transaction table, we do not enter, uh, we do not generate a bill saying that, okay, today is a zero, a zero transaction date. No, we don't enter into the system. Just that date will be missing in the data. So to avoid all these things, we create a date table. We'll also understand, uh, you know, what is the importance of date table and how to write the time intelligence functions. We'll talk about them. And then uh, how to create a robust data modeling intuitively. And we'll, we'll talk about all those things. Okay, so we got the data. We cleaned up the data. We loaded the data into Power BI. We built the data models. And what is the next thing? Visualize them, right? So we work with different uh, types of visuals. So many visuals are present. Uh, the traditional visuals like uh, simple column charts, bar charts, line charts, pie charts, donut chart, tree map, waterfall. So many types of visuals are there. Along with them, Power BI also supports custom visuals. Custom visuals. Custom visuals are English custom visuals, not Telugu custom visuals. When I say custom visuals, you may be thinking they are difficult to build. No, they are not. <laughs> custom visuals, which are not part of the default list of the visuals. There are about a 30 visuals available. But on top of them, you can also download custom visuals and you can easily visualize them. Today, I'll show you an example how you can create one animated uh, uh, bar chart race or a word cloud. It's like very easy to create, okay? And uh, as part of visualization, we'll also talk about one thing, very, very, very important about this. Most of the people struggle with this only. Let's say I have a data, but I don't know how to present it. This is what we will uh, discuss as part of the visualization. So, you know, a few of the dashboards, it's a, yeah, one of those examples. A few of the dashboards, when you see them, you know, you don't need any special uh, explanation. No need to explain that. Just look at that. You will understand what's happening in the business. But few of the dashboards, though they show a lot of information, you don't really, you know, understand what's happening in the business. Both of them may have different types of charts and all, but uh, one thing, it is like very easy to understand. The other thing, even though that has so much of informa information, you can't understand it. You know the reason why? Because of the types of the visuals. Okay. There is a scientific approach for every visual, when to choose it, okay, what to choose it. And uh, there is a, a specific reason if you are going with a column chart. Column charts, basically, you know, whenever you have an, uh, a comparison among the time, we show it in the column chart. A comparison over the time, we show it in the line chart. So we'll talk about all these things. If anyone is new to the visualization, yes, we spend one day on this one only. And there I'll talk about each and every visual and how to use it, when to use it, and different data models I'll show you. Then you will get some better understanding about visualization. And this is one thing uh, that we cover. Most of us, you know, you want to master these data analytics and visual analytics tools, but this is where you struggle a lot because you have so much of data, but you don't know how to present it. And you just randomly choose a chart and you, you present it. But as an end user, that person may find it like really challenging to understand that chart. Okay, so we'll talk about visualization and along with custom visuals and all. Then once the visuals are ready, slicing and icing, you should be able to filter the data. Let's say you have so much of data, but your client is interested only in last month, what happened? Then what is that we do? We create the slicers. You know the slicers in Excel? What did they do? On the pivots, you can connect the slicers or the tables also, you can connect the slicers and you can choose the values to filter the data. Same thing can be done in Power BI also. Slicing and dicing, we have the slicers and filters available, and we'll do that. Okay, so this is all okay, but uh, the client may not be so happy just seeing whatever is present in the data, right? They may want to see a few summaries, like with the help of DAX functions, or maybe a time intelligence function, something like, okay, what happened today? Exactly last year, same day, what happened? This month, March 24, uh, 2024, exactly last year, March 2023, what happened? You see, these kind of time intelligence functions are there as part of DAX functions. In DAX, you, you know what is DAX full form? Data analysis, Data analysis expressions. Don't, don't ask me why it's not DAE, okay? It's DAX. Data, yeah, data analysis expressions, okay? Fine then, so we try to understand what is DAX, okay? What is DAX and what is the syntax of a DAX? Using the DAX, we can create three things. We can create the tables, we can create the columns, we can create the measures. 
tables, columns, measures. I'll take you through each and everything there and uh, we'll try to create the tables, columns and measures and we'll explain like when do you need to create an additional table. We call them ad hoc tables. Uh, when do we need to create an, a column or a measure? Okay. Measures are basically the aggregations. I think uh, the ones who completed SQL, you know this. What is an aggregate function? It takes multiple values input and returns a single output. So those kind of aggregations can be created using DAX also, right? So that is data analysis expressions. We can create measures, measures, aggregated outputs. So if you are good with Excel formulas, 60 to 65% of the DAX look, you know, those DAX functions look very much similar. You're good with Excel functions like left, right, mid, proper, substitute, replace, average, count, you know, min, max, ceiling, floor, all these things that you learn in Excel. Similar kind of functions are there in DAX also. So the DAX language is a formula language using which the entire Power BI dashboards are driven. Okay. So Excel formulas are very much needed. If someone is very, very new to Excel, uh, it's not that you can't learn Power BI. You can still learn Power BI, but the challenge is, see, most of the people in this group, online, offline, most of you have idea about Excel and Excel formulas, lookups and sum F, count F and all that stuff, right? But if someone is part of this group who is fairly new to Excel, so I'm not saying you can't learn it. You can learn it, but you will have to invest more time. Okay. So I simply say that, okay, calculate function, I can make it use like a sum if function in Excel. Assumption is that you all know what is a sum if in Excel, but someone is fairly new and who doesn't know sum if. That means this person will have to understand what is sum if in Excel. And then uh, that person will have to practice a calculate function in DAX. That is a challenge. I'm not saying you can't learn without Excel. But with the Excel background, it is easy for you to understand Power BI DAX because Power BI DAX looks very much similar to Excel functions only. It's the same formula language. It looks very much similar like Excel functions. We also write the DAX same way, equal to so-and-so, you know, equal to sum of so-and-so or equal to average of so-and-so, we do the same DAX functions. So in the DAX also, we have the, you know, mathematical functions, statistical functions, lookup functions, right? Date time functions, text functions, all of them are there. Along with this, we will have to spend at least a two to three days on the calculate function. There is a function called calculate function and this is like very powerful thing. This is like a paracetamol uh, tablet, okay? You know the paracetamol? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I, whenever someone talks about a paracetamol, I remember my uh, childhood days. Uh, we used to have a government, uh, you know, primary health center, right? Uh, you. Most of the times, the only one tablet that is available there is a paracetamol, okay? Those days. A good uh, 20, what, 30 years ago. Yeah, okay. So anyone uh, goes there? Okay, fever, paracetamol, okay? Stomach upset, paracetamol. Headache, paracetamol. Heart attack, paracetamol. <laughs> I mean, that's only the medicine that was, you know, that point in time available. All in one tablet, correct. Uh, Corona also, you know, finally turned out to be a dollar six fifty, right? Yeah. Calculate function in DAX is like that. Remember this. Any kind of a requirement, you will first of all go with calculate function only. Most of the things, right? Any tricky requirement that can be solved using calculate. That is a paracetamol of DAX, right? We'll talk about that when to use, where to use, how to use. But remember this word, calculate. The function name itself is calculate. In Excel, we do a lot of uh, VLOOKUPs. Most of the times when we want to gather the data from multiple sources, right? So most of the reports you find VLOOKUPs, right? Similarly in uh, Power BI, most of the places you find calculate functions. So we'll talk about that. So DAX functions, they basically help us to uh, create trends or what happened, what's happening, right? Last year, what happened? This year, what happened? Or one particular region, what happened? All these conditional based, or uh, to add more insights to your analysis. We use a lot of DAX functions. I also, you know, these days finding a few videos. Whenever I open uh, YouTube, right? First, there would be an ad, right? Master Power BI in two hours, right? Huh? At the rate, only 99 rupees. 
Yeah. Or you can become like an expert and uh, create, uh, you know, stunning dashboard just in two hours. I think like, okay, if this is really possible just in two hours, what is that I've been doing from the last 15 years? I, I get this question, right? Creating a stunning dashboard maybe in two hours is easy as long as the data is clean and everything is very, very, you know, are well organized, the table structure is present and you know what exactly you need to do and without any DAX functions, right, without any proper knowledge of the DAX functions also, you can create a stunning report. Absolutely no doubt. But understand that uh, real time um, you get in the real time, you may be thinking you always get an ideal uh, data set. No, you can expect the dirtiest data in the real time. You may be thinking like all those big companies, they maintain the data in a very well organized way. No, don't expect that, right? Big companies, they, de they may be dealing with billions of dollars of value or a turnover, but their data is still dirty only. As a data analyst, it is our responsibility to clean up that right transform that into the required shape and that will take so long time right today it may be easy for you to write a vlookup formula but to understand when to use vlookup how to use vlookup you had to spend some time right similarly power bi yes once you master that tool then creating a really a powerful dashboard within 2 hours is easy but as a fresher a beginner with power bi 2 hours you may be able to create but when if the data set is very well organized, the data types are well maintained and uh, your requirement is clear and without any DAX functions, simple drag and drop anyone cre can create, even uh, you know, fifth class student can create. But the real time data is not like that always, right? My last engagement, I was uh, a senior consultant with one of those companies and I was doing uh, Power BI. And this company is into billions of dollars, okay? They handle billions of dollars revenue. And their, their data, you, I think if I give that data, you may cry also. Looking at that table structure and, uh, you know, the way they store the data and all, the different platforms, the names of the employees are mentioned differently. There is no ID also. You see, then you need to come up with a plan. So you need to suggest the client, okay, this is not the way we need to store the data. So all those things, I'm not guaranteeing you that everything can be done within these 30 hours of uh, training, but you will definitely get some, you know, uh, right direction, right? What to ask, what not to ask, okay? Uh, how you can suggest the client and all these things you will learn as part of this training, right? I'm also currently working on uh, one um, uh, presentation. I'll, it is still under development, but I'll show you, which is useful. Yeah, I'll turn this into uh, a presentation and I'll share with you all. Anyone who is joining like a, a data analyst, right? You should ask these questions, okay? Team specific questions you need to ask, data specific questions you need to ask, and reporting requirement specific questions you need to ask, okay? So what is the timeline? What is the QA process? When it will, how it will be tested? When should it, it should be published? And who is the signing of authority and all that stuff? As a beginner, if you want to get into data analytics, I'll turn this into a nice presentation and uh, uh, I'll share that with you, maybe by towards the end of our uh, training. So I've been thinking about this uh, from, uh, you know, from maybe our last uh, couple of months, because after training, uh, our students are getting placed in different companies, but they don't know what to ask. Right, if they give the requirement, the client gives the requirement and if they understand it, they can do it. But uh, you also should uh, ask a few questions, right? So whether the date, you see, client asks, I want to see the total sales. It may be sounding okay, but the table that we got, there is no sales column. Then how can you create the total sales? You get the point? Then you need to know like what are the questions you need to ask. Then I'll, I'll share this uh, later. Okay. So then <laughs> finally, you know, what is it we do after creating this uh, report? We need to publish. Okay. I'll show you one sample today, how to publish the report and all. Um, when it comes to the publishing part, we will be using Power BI service. For this Power BI service, we need to have a Power BI service account. Okay. So what is Power BI service account? It is a cloud platform and Azure server. And uh, this requires organizational email address. 
nothing but using your personal gmail or personal yahoo mail you cannot create a power bi service account okay you will have to use uh, organizational email address and i'll show you the way without the organizational email address also you can create your power bi service account once you have that account then only you can publish your reports okay so as part of publishing we'll also talk about one very very interesting thing called managing roles okay so let me ask you this you created one excel report in that excel report you have four regions data east region south region west region north region in one excel report you got all four regions data and you need to share this report with the regional managers but your top management says okay these regional managers should be able to see their respective data let's say north manager opens that excel report should be able to see only north data then what is that we do usually in excel we delete the other three regions and we send only north regional data report to north manager south uh, report to the south manager so you will have to end up creating four reports from the same consolidated report and the consolidated report should go to the ceo if that is a requirement you will have to end up creating five different reports same report but five things uh, five different reports why because you need to control the data in the background otherwise if you send the same report uh, you know others will also be able to see the performance of other region you are getting the point but as part of power bi we learn something called managing the roles in which we have r l s row level security row level security what is this row level security <clears throat> once we set up the roles and assign the row level security in the report okay if the north manager is logging in that person will be able to see only north data report is same but because north manager uses uh, north manager credentials automatically the report filtering will be done report is same but the same report if it is opened by the ceo should be able to see everything report is same but because of the ceo login credentials uh, it will show the entire data to ceo you get the point so one of those topics are, uh, is there which is uh, uh, managing roles uh, with rls row level security we'll also talk about that and after publishing this report we can grant permissions to different users there uh, we also talk about the different uh, levels of access whether it is an admin access member access contributor access or a viewer access four types of access levels are available we'll also talk about them and setting up the workspaces creating a dashboard is another thing that we do finally we'll create one mobile application mobile dashboard and an application also we can create a mobile layout and an application right so right from what is the business intelligence and how to get the data and finally publish a dashboard or create one a mobile layout and an app this is what we do as part of this training program i'll be covering a few important topics they are part of pl300 exam what is pl300 exam which is power bi data analyst associate exam and if you pay attention to those questions it is also possible for you to clear pl300 power bi exam which is an online exam conducted by microsoft if anyone is interested like uh, excel has an excel exam right from microsoft similarly power bi also has a power bi exam from microsoft pl300 which is uh, the voucher you can also buy it online 4800 plus gst 5664 rupees right if you are looking for a practice test and uh, along with other uh, registration and all other stuff support which is going to be 6500 plus gst which comes around 7670 rupees right uh, it's not a mandatory thing for everyone it's up to you it is optional if you want to put that badge on your resume you can go for the certification otherwise it's okay there is no you know it is not mandatory but the ones who are certified you will have a different weightage altogether right um i'm a pl300 certified and i'm a mct microsoft certified trainer and there are so many other certifications i have completed because uh, you know whenever i present my profile to the client i i should look strong right you know how how can i like uh, uh, explain or uh, demonstrate my entire skill set in that 15 20 minutes client meeting not possible but what i usually say is that i am a certified uh, you know excel expert or word expert access expert and all 
that tells my you know uh, skill with that tool right similarly power bi has a certification pl300 anyone who attends this training uh, you should be in a position to clear power bi pl300 certification also okay but up to you whether you want to go for it or not but if you want to go for it let me know i'll let you know the entire process how to clear the certification i'll also share uh, enough material for you okay all right so all of you are good with this uh, contents everyone understood online participants you are okay you followed yes sir yes sir hmm Usually, no one can uh, promise a certification. Certification, right? So, if you attend this training, you can uh, clear the certification I'm saying, right? No one can do this. But uh, I'm saying this, I'm trusting you that you will do enough practice, right? If you don't do the practice, don't attempt the certification. Unnecessarily, you'll be losing the money. Because it is a time-bound exam. You get uh, around 100 minutes and there would be a 50 uh, to 54 questions you will be getting. So with practice, you can easily clear that in maybe in less than 50, 40 minutes also. Right? But if you can practice whatever we discuss here, definitely you will be able to. What all Excel topics might be needed? And do we need SQL knowledge? SQL, anyways, I'm going to... Uh, cover as part of data modeling and all. Okay, what is the primary key, foreign key, and what type of real-time systems are available and all that stuff. I'll once again cover, but it is not the detailed SQL. It's only uh, limited to just, uh, you know, to build the data models and, uh, you know, to understand uh, RDBMS, that's it. Detailed SQL would take about, again, a 20 hours training program, uh, but SQL I'll cover. But coming to Excel, you should know formulas, Sum F, count F, B lookup, index match, average F, left, right, a few formulas definitely with pivots. You know what is a pivot, right? How to quickly summarize the data and a few charts, how to create, right? Conditional formatting, data validations, right? Uh, removing duplicates, how to get only the distinct values after removing the duplicates. Yeah, these kind of things are needed, okay? Uh, if you want to learn Power BI. Yeah, as I mentioned already, you know, you can learn Power BI without Excel also, but you will be struggling a bit. Because others, you know, when I ask like, okay, this is as good as the sum F and let's proceed. Assumption is that you all are good with sum F. But if someone is uh, not aware of sum F, then that person will be stuck there only. You know, what is sum F and how it works. But anyone has this, uh, you know, fair understanding about Excel formulas, pivoting, uh, conditional formatting, things like that, you can attend uh, Power BI. Okay. But anyway, SQL, I'm going to uh, cover those uh, important concepts to build the data models. Uh, but it is not the complete SQL, uh, okay, training. I'll cover only a few concepts now. But if you want to understand more about SQL and Excel, uh, probably you may want to reach out to the front office. They will help you when the new batches are starting. Okay. All right. So contents, good. So what all things are we going to learn? Power BI desktop and Power BI service. Right? Perfect. Fine then. So um uh, i think a few new participants joined uh, let me introduce myself i think i missed that part so i'm kishore and it's been uh, 15 plus years i'm into this these are my badges did i show you this yes no. okay this may be for the new joiners yeah so uh, like completed a good number of certifications, uh, worked with the different tools and different uh, domains. Um, yeah, so that's briefly about me. And I'm uh, going to be the trainer for this uh, Power BI training program.
Okay. So what is uh, data analysis and why it is needed? I think uh, anyone knows data analysis? Why do we need data analysis? Hmm. Okay. So basically we clean the data and we then analyze and uh, draw the insights. Okay. Why do we need to, why do we need to draw the insights from the data? To help the business uh, to take the right decisions, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Fine then. So there are four types of analytics. Four types of data analytics are there. Descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. Okay, descriptive analytics. What is descriptive analytics? It clearly says what's happening in the business. As a beginner, most of you would be placed in a descriptive analyst role only. Okay. What is this descriptive analytics role? It's all about what's happening in the business or what happened in the business. Let's say yesterday what happened, last week what happened, last month what happened, all these things are done by the descriptive analysts only. Uh, if you are a beginner, you usually get into a descriptive analytics role. Why? Because it's all about uh, picking up the, you know, extracting the historical data and creating the reports and uh, letting the business know that, okay, this is what happening currently in the business. Uh, sometimes you may be part of diagnostic analytics also. What is diagnostic analytics? Why is it happening? If you can find out what is happening and it is easy for you to find out why is it happening, right? Let's say profit uh, profits went a little low last month. Okay, if you can figure it out, like uh, profits went down, then you can also find out why they went up, right? If they went up or, you know, so you can figure out why they went up, what could be the reasons, right? So if your descriptive analytics are good, then, uh, you know, finding out why they, why those numbers fluctuated and all, you can find them out using the diagnostic analytics. So you, as a beginner, as a new joiner in uh, data analytics, most of you would be doing these two, descriptive analytics and diagnostic analytics. But the predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics, they require little domain knowledge also. Okay. Let's say profits went too high. Why they went high, you can show the numbers. But what are the actual reasons behind them? You may not be able to tell exactly unless you have the domain knowledge. So predictive analytics is the one they tell us what's likely to happen in future, right? What's likely to happen? The predictive analytics may or may not be 100% accurate every time, but 95% confidently you can say that are 90% that, okay, these numbers may be like this. That is predictive analytics. What's likely to happen? But for this, you will have to, just not with your historical data, you will have to have your uh, domain knowledge, market conditions, and all other stuff you will have to consider. If your predictive analytics are correct, then your prescriptive analytics will be correct. Because prescriptive analytics, they deal, they deal with what is it I need to do now. Let's say your predictive analytics saying that there will be a demand for your products in the next three months. Then what is it you need to do to meet the demand? You will have to increase the supply. You get the point? So if your predictive analytics go wrong, then your prescriptive analytics will also go wrong. You got the point? So that these two, predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics, as a beginner, you may not get that opportunity to directly work with them. But descriptive analytics and diagnostic analytics, this is where we all start our journey because this is only about analyzing historical data and tell the business that this is what currently happening and this is why they are happening. You understood? But when you look at the value and the complexity of these subjects, when you look at descriptive, the value that it adds and the complexity it has is low only. When you go to the diagnostic, the value that it adds and the complexity that it has a bit more high, but predictive and prescriptive. You see this prescriptive, more value, more complex. Okay, tell me who would be paid the highest here? Descriptive? Highest payments go to prescriptive. 
prescriptive. Yeah, because you are adding more value to the business. Of course, the analytics are complex, no doubt. But you are adding more business, you know, value to the business. All the employees are paid basis on the value that they add to the business. Simple, right? So you may want to target these roles, but uh, as a pressure, it may not be directly possible. You start off your career in uh, career in uh, uh, you know uh, descriptive and diagnostic, then uh, sticking to the same domain for some time, then you can move on to predictive and prescriptive also. Got some idea now? Right. Why data visualization is important? Mm. Easy understanding and quick decision making. Mm. Correct. Um, by any chance, I showed you this raw data in any of our uh, examples. <laughs> With that, let's ask the same question to the online participants. Let's see how many of them can answer it correctly. I want to create one quick pivot here. And I want to show the region and the profit. Okay. Online participants, this is a question for you. Which region has the least profit? Time started. One. Let's say I will give you South. five seconds. One. South. Two, three, four, five. West. Who is it? Which one is it? South. Okay, one says south. Others? I guess west. West, okay. You know, a bit confused, right? You know, someone said south and someone said uh, west. But let me show you. With the help of the visualization, just keep the cursor there. And now you see that south, you can easily say this, right? Data visualization helps us to quickly understand the data and to take the right decisions. Okay. So when you present your data in the form of a table like this, this creates a lot of confusion. Okay. But when you visualize it, it it's like very easy. And this is what Power BI does. Right, it's very very easy to visualize the data. Okay, job opportunities. This is little outdated, but uh, I think from April onwards the market should be good and uh, a good number of openings should be there for analysts and reasonable uh, average pay. Okay, for any data analyst and for to become a data analyst, uh, you know you should definitely have uh, Microsoft Excel, any of the RDBMS idea. Okay, relational database. If you have Python and Stats, it's like a more added advantage and Power BI and dashboarding. So as part of Power BI sessions, we learn how to dashboard the date, uh, dashboard, uh, you know, how to create a dashboard. And uh, yeah, we use Power BI for that. Okay. So you take any other profiles, if any other operational profiles are there, the packages are comparatively lesser than the data analysts. Okay. So Definitely, it's a great uh, uh, path to choose. But you need to have different skills for this. All right, what is uh, Power BI? It is a suite of business analytics tools to analyze the data and share insights. So what are the different tools that we have in Power BI? We have the very first one called Power Query. Anyone heard Power Query? Where did you hear this Power Query? Excel. Excel, right? Excel has Power Query. You know, one interesting thing, Power Query, Microsoft initially introduced in Excel only. They introduced in Excel. Even before Power Query, they introduced one more thing called Power Pivot, which is to build the models. Okay, they introduced Power Pivot in 2010 itself. In 2013, as an add-in, they introduced the Power Query. Now, together, both of them, you know, plus a Power View, they've created a Power BI desktop along with publishing capabilities. Okay. So we clean up the data using Power Query. 
We build the data models using Power Pivot. We visualize the data with the help of Power BI Desktop. And then we publish the data using Power BI Service. Power Query, if you know in Excel, it's the same Power Query platform that we have in Power BI. If you can do something there in Excel, the same thing can be done in Power BI also. Okay, so Power BI has uh, multiple things like this. You just remember these four for now. Let's take a look at the components of Power BI. Um, you know, we basically work with Power BI desktop. So how do we install Power BI desktop? I'll uh, discuss this today. You can easily install Power BI desktop from Microsoft Store. Once we create the report, we publish the report. And by the way, how do we create the report? We create the reports with the help of different data sources. Once we create the report, we publish the report onto Power BI service, which is a cloud platform. Okay, we build the report and we publish. And whatever the report that you created here will be available on Power BI service. And once it is published, you can consume the report uh, you know, you know, you can see that report in your mobile or in your tab or in your desktop or laptop. It's like very easy. Any other person can just log into the account and can see that. Okay, we use Power BI desktop and we design the report with the help of different data sources and we upload them to the Power BI service. And from there, you can consume the report using any of these uh, devices. And we also have something called Power BI gateways. What is this Power BI gateway? Let's say today you have published a report about uh, stock values. Tomorrow, it should show the updated stock values, right? Day after tomorrow, once again, it should show one more updated stock values, right? So basically, you no need to refresh the reports manually. With the help of Power BI gateways, we can schedule the reports and every uh, you know uh, time that we set up, Let's say whatever the schedule refresh time that we set up for the you know refresh purpose, the when that time comes, let's say eight o'clock a.m. Okay, eight a.m. If we schedule the report tomorrow, eight a.m. Automatically it will be refreshed, and it will show the updated numbers. In the real time, the data always changes, right? Let's say today you are looking at the data, and uh, your report shows yesterday's numbers. Yesterday, what all happened? When you look at the same report tomorrow, what it should show? It should show today's numbers. You're getting the point? Yesterday, there were 100 sales. Today, there are 120 sales. So when you open this report day after tomorrow, then again, you know, it will have to show the next day numbers. So that's how the refreshes you can set up. So in the normal reporting, like using Excel and all, you as a developer, you will have to create the report multiple times. You will have to refresh the private tables and all. But Power BI has a concept called Power BI Gateways and that helps us to refresh, refresh the reports automatically. We'll talk about this, how to set up the gateways also. Okay, as I said, uh, we are going to cover both uh, Power BI desktop and service. So gateway setup is part of the Power BI service. I'll cover that. Prerequisites. What are the prerequisites for, to learn Power BI? Uh, you need to have a Windows 10 or 11 if you have. And then you need to have browsers, internet connection and knowledge of Excel formulas and X SQL is desirable, right? Without these things, uh, you know, it is desirable. If you know them, you will easily learn, but otherwise you will struggle a bit. I'm not saying you it is impossible to learn, but you will have to struggle a bit. Okay. Again, one more question we get like Power BI and Tableau. Both of them are like uh, visualization tools only, right? When to go with Power BI, when to go with Tableau. The one place where I see Power BI is very, very, you know, making the difference is, uh, yeah, the pricing. You know, Tableau pricing is little expensive. Power BI is like very much affordable. And one thing is uh, another challenge with Power BI is it only accepts a one GB data set as a pro user. But when it comes to Tableau, there is no such limitation. Okay. Suitable for any big large company. 
okay and another uh, challenge or a limitation with power bi is uh, power bi works only in windows and one you know the two operating systems in the uh, computers what are they the most commonly used there are other uh, operating systems also but most commonly used linux and all uh, uh, developers and all they use windows operating system and mac apple these two are most commonly used but power bi is the one that works only with windows if you have a macbook you cannot download uh, power bi okay 2015 april uh, microsoft released their first commercial edition of power bi but tableau is there from 2003 Okay, almost like twenty-one years old. It is just like nine years old. Okay, um, and most of the people find Power BI is very very easy to learn. The reason being uh, the interface, whatever we have in Power BI, is very much similar to other Microsoft products, like the same kind of interface it has. But this requires a little training there. data storage uh, is cloud based and here we have clouded server performance wise uh, good for mid scale uh, uh, mid size data and uh, can handle large data sets also implementation is very easy but tableau requires a little learning measures we use the dax functions here we use mdx measures volume of the data 1 gb limitation is there as a pro account user but it is very much suitable for any large company and the environment is just only windows but tableau works both in windows and mac uh, there is a different language used in tableau is a kind of language okay fine then so custom visuals is another thing can be easily downloaded today i'll show you how you can uh, download and use them in in minutes you can do it but uh, tableau it's not that complex but uh, yeah not very easy okay so tableau versus power bi if it is like a, a mid sized uh, scale company then uh, power bi is a recommended tool but big company they will have to take a call whether they want to go with the power bi or tableau but let me tell you one thing not every company uh, even though it is a very big company they no need to go with tableau only why because even in a big company there will be small teams right when they want to create a report using the uh, small teams data it will be less only so not every company requires a big uh, tool like tableau okay even a big company also can go for power bi you see this as per gartner analytics microsoft power bi stands here next we have uh, salesforce tableau click sense and we also have the google data studio okay so we have so many tools in the market but currently microsoft is leading it okay why power bi why power bi only right it's like very easy to learn because the interface is very much similar it can integrate the data from any source okay let me open power bi tomorrow i'll show you how to install power bi but for today i'll just show you like Uh, you know how to integrate the data from any source you name any source it is there excel csv xml json pdf sql access ibm sql postgre cybase teradata sap hana web page power bi semantic models it used to call power bi data sets lake house right warehouses snowflake azure what not you name anything that connector is there so it is very easy for us to connect to any of the sources and you can easily read the data and create the reports it is highly you know highly interactive visuals uh, and you know on the page everything is connected and you can easily filter the data so let me show you a simple example here i want to get the data using one excel workbook
let me show you this. I want to get one data set from one Excel uh, file. Or this table. I'll just load it. So after loading the data into Power BI, it is like very easy to create the reports. There is something called NLP. Anyone heard NLP? Language. Yeah, natural language processing. With the help of that, I can get the different types of visuals can be you know created. Just do a double click on the report canvas, and you can ask a question like, you have the sales, okay? You have the profit, you have the sales, and all. Okay, you can create, you can ask a question and create a visual here. I want to see total sales. Total sales is how much? 21.83. You see this? So you no need to be a visualization expert to do this, right? Just do a double click and you can ask total profit. This much it is. Okay. And then just do double click and ask total quantity. 14.07. Okay. I want to see profit by state. We have the profit and we have the state on a map chart. It's like very easy. You just ask like a profit by state in a map. That's it. Now, if I click on this uh, Florida, then it automatically filters the other visuals also. Florida has 83 transactions out of which negative 983 profit, which is a loss and 1.24 million sales. California is this and we have other few states. You see them? Everything is like by default connected and uh, you just filter one thing, the other things will be filtered. In Slicer also, we have this technique, right? Slicer connections, report connections we can do. But everything is like a default uh, one. By default, everything is connected. And with the, with these interactive visuals, we can filter the data. That is what it is trying to tell you. And moreover, that those cards and the map, I simply asked the question in English, that's it. And it created a, a, a visual and a card, right? And these, can, these things can be exported to PPG or PDF. It's very easy. Let's say if I want to get this thing to a PDF, just go here and say export and I want to export it as a PDF. That's it. Whatever the one that we created will be exported to PDF. Uh, you know, it creates highly compressed data sets. If you load a 100 MB data into it, this turns out to be a 50 MB or 40 MB sometimes. If you may have a 100 MB data outside, but once you load the data into Power BI, it will be compressed, highly compressed. There is something called Power Query Engine, and uh, this makes sure that the data entire data set is compressed and into a very small size for the faster response. Okay, high quality visuals like map visuals and all that stuff can be created very easily. Custom visuals. Let me show you one of those things. Um, I use the a web source, which is COVID data. I want to show like animated bar chart race. I just want to download that COVID data into my report, load it. The data is coming from WHO website directly. Okay, all the rows are loaded. Now what I can do is that I can go to the custom visuals, get more visuals. I'll say animated bar chart race. Add this.
Okay, if you remember, initially China was the one reporting all the cases. I did not do much. I just configured it. I just loaded the data and slowly other countries also started picking up the numbers. Right? And then uh, United States took over that first place. And India is nowhere. Now you see India? Slowly. Right? Now it's in second position. You see that? So day by day, how the cases progressed, okay, what are their uh, cumulative totals? We can show something like this. And to configure these things, it hardly takes any one or two minutes. That's it. I downloaded and I just used it. Not only these kind of visuals, not only animated visuals, sometimes the data set, what we get is, you know, you, uh, with the regular visuals, you may not be able to present anything on the on a chart. If you take a look at this kind of a data, can you present visually this? There you don't have any numbers. You just have only the review, right? So what you can do is, uh, for this kind of a thing, let me just uh, get the data from Excel. Comments data. Load the data. There is something called word cloud. You would have seen these things uh, many places. We'll also discuss how to deal with different custom visuals, but I'm just quickly showing you and as part of today's session. Word cloud, okay? So this, I can use the same review data, put the review in the category, right? You would have seen something like this in your, uh, maybe somewhere. Yes or no? It's like very easy to configure all these things using the custom visuals. Okay. So, you can create custom visuals like this. I see one question there. What is the difference between business analyst and the data analyst roles? I'll discuss this shortly right after this. Uh, it's a cloud-based tool and can be accessed from anywhere. Every month, uh, improvements released. Okay. And it's a self-service tool. You can only just drag and drop and apply the filters and you can create, uh, you know, small reports and you can draw the insights. Important visuals can be pinned onto a dashboard. We'll also discuss what is a dashboard concept. Uh, in, Power B, <laughs> in Power BI, a dashboard means it is, uh, with the help of multiple visuals from multiple reports, we create a dashboard. We'll see that later. So natural query, you know this, right? Just now we used an NLP, right, to generate Visuals there automatically generates in, in, generate insights on the data. Okay, I, can sh I would like to show you one more interesting thing. Let's say this particular thing. Um, instead of that, I would like to create one chart. Okay, so we have the different quarters here. Okay, you see this uh, 2017 quarter one, through, one two, three, four. You see this uh, uh, after 2018 quarter two, 2018 quarter three, there is a significant uh, change in the profit. 
I want to understand more about this. Okay, how did it happen, right? Then what you can do is, you can do something like this. So long. Design this on a new page. Okay, select this, right click, and there is something called analyze and explain why there is an increase. You see, in few seconds, it will generate the insights automatically, like why this thing happened. This thing happened, uh, you know, it has, uh, it's from negative 5,000 to positive 40,000, right? And how did it happen? Because of the different, uh, you know, ship modes, standard class, all this stuff. The different consume uh, different you know segments like consumer corporate home office this is how the numbers changed from 5000 negative 5000 to positive uh, 40000 this is how the contribution from the different categories this is how the contribution you see the different types of analytics it's able to create on the fly right everything is like an inbuilt okay if you want to show okay there is a change in uh, significant change in the east if you want to use this chart onto your report, just say add, right? And once you add it, you see this? From this value to this value, how it has grown because of this, right? So automatically it can generate the insights on the data and a large community of Power BI developers, okay? So there is something uh, called Power BI uh, uh, helper community and there you can post your questions if you want. Let's say you're stuck somewhere and you want to know more about it or you need as any suggestion or any help, you can post your question there. And a very big community is there and they help us. Okay. Fine then. So Power BI, definitely it is very, very easy to learn comparatively, you know, uh, lesser, uh, I mean, cheaper than Tableau and other few tools. Any small company or mid-scale company also can afford this tool. Easy to, you know, uh, install and easy to create reports and publish them. Any Excel user uh, finds Power BI is very much uh, similar because uh, the ent entire interface also looks very much similar. Coming to business analyst and data analyst, there are uh, differences between uh, the business analyst and data analyst roles, roles and responsibilities. Usually, a uh, data analyst job is to gather the data, right? Do the required data transformations, okay? And then load the data into any reporting tool and prepare the reports. With this, the data analyst job is done. But if there is a business analyst, this person will have to create the report sometimes. And once the reports are created, analyze and use the domain knowledge to give ideas or the suggestions to the business. There are additional responsibilities to business analysts. And usually the business analysts also, they come from different background like a PMP, you know, a project management or a scrum and agile and so many other things also there. Because they will have to manage so many other things. It's just not like only the data is reported, your job is done. No. A data analyst job is done once the data is reported. Okay, because the data analyst job is to just create the report and show them. We don't really need to know what's happening, why is it happening and all that stuff. The business analyst can take care. Right? So packages wise, the business analyst, they get little more package because they help the business to take the right decision. Okay? So... Uh, as we go along, I'll be explaining you the roles of a business analyst and a data analyst, but all the business analysts, definitely they will have to have some data related skills also, right? So they cannot always depend on the data analyst to share the report. Sometimes they will have to create their own reports also. Okay. So I'll quickly cover how to get Power BI. It's very easy. You can use this link, but the easiest way is go to start button, 
just type store. There is something called Microsoft Store. Open the store. Say Power BI Desktop. You see that? Just go to Start button, Store Power BI Desktop. Search for it. Uh, because I already have Power BI in my system, it's showing Open. But for you, it shows Get. Get or Install. You know either of the ones. So just click that. That's it. It's around maybe a 600, 700 MB application it is. Make sure you are connected to Wi-Fi and then download it. And once it is downloaded, the very first time when you open this report, I mean, you open Power BI, it asks for Power BI service registration. You don't register at this point. I'll let you know when you can go for Power BI service registration. As of now, it's not needed. Okay. So just download Power BI desktop. And if it asks for Power BI service registration, just close that. You no need to register. You no need to fill in your information because uh, even though you fill in your information, the email address it, it asks is for the organizational email account. But we don't have any email account which is given by organization, right? Something like, uh, like at the rate uh, Deloitte.com or at the rate HSBC.com, that kind of an email address is needed. Using your Gmail or Yahoo Mail or Rediff Mail, it doesn't work. So I'll let you know how you can create your organizational account. There is a session for it, how to register. Until or unless we go into that publishing part, you don't need a registration. Okay. So at that point, I'll discuss. But for today, what you can do is simply download Power BI. That's it. Yeah. And there you get a question like, I have a system and I have Windows 10 or 11, uh, but how about the system configuration, right? If you have i5 with 8 GB recommended, i5 with 8 GB recommended, even if it is lesser uh, speed, like something like i3 with 4 GB also okay, but it consumes a lot of resources. I'll show you quickly. Uh, Power BI is currently open, right? If I go to my task manager and if I check the, the, the resources utilization, you see that? 2.2 GB RAM is used only for Power BI. Because I got like a 16 GB RAM, it is kind of okay. But if you have a 4 GB RAM and a 2 GB itself is consumed by Power BI, then the rest of the 2 GB will be used for other applications. So just be careful. Okay. So what we usually do is that uh, when we want to work with Power BI, we make sure that only one Power BI uh, application is open because every instance consumes more resources of your system, right? My entire CPU is like 24%, uh, right? And uh, almost 70% of my RAM is consumed, right? For uh, uh, all these applications. There is a gateway also currently running. I'll also talk about what is Power BI data gateway you will understand how to refresh uh, automatically all the reports. Okay, so if you have uh, i5 with 8 GB is uh, enough, but if you have i3 with 8 GB or i3 with 4 GB also you can work, but your system runs very, very slow. You know, you click on one button and you will have to wait for 30, 40 seconds so that it shows its uh, effect, right? So i5 with 8 GB anyone has, go ahead and install. But any with less speed and less memory, you may want to think about it again before installing it. Okay? All right. So system configuration we discussed, right? How to download we discussed. Anyone who has Windows 10 or 11 with i5 8 GB, please make sure you download it. It's like two, three steps. That's it. Don't download and keep it ready. And in the next session, I'll discuss how you can create your first report. What are the basic steps involved in you know building any Power BI report? And then I'll talk about uh, relationships and all in the data modeling concepts. Okay. This is our next class. But for today, you know how to install Power BI. 
right? Any questions? Online participants, any questions? So, Kishore, mm -hmm. um, you said approximately two hours a day, and then uh, this is a 32 hour. So, we'll be this is a, going to be only two and a half week course, <laughs> or maybe three uh, three weeks. Three weeks, yes. Okay. Um, today, I mean, as most of you are new uh, new to Power BI, there are no questions actually. But going forward, we'll also have some time, uh, you know, window for question and answers. Okay. So for today, it is just like an orientation session. So from the next session onwards, we'll be doing it from somewhere around 2.40 we start and we go up to 4.30, 4.35. Okay. Okay, so before our next session, what all you need to do? Install Power BI. And also you just reach out to the front office if you don't get access to the video and uh, the material package. I'll upload the material package uh, shortly. Right. SQL uh, questions, right? Uh, I'll post that in the group today. Yeah, somehow missed it. You can download it, right? Material, just download it to your system. It is a downloadable one. Material. The Google Drive material, you just do a right click and download. Okay, so cool then. Um, the session video will be uploaded shortly. You can go through once again. Of course, there is nothing much, but it is more like an orientation and to get some awareness about uh, Power BI. Material link, it will be shortly posted in your group and uh, video link also. Okay, excellent then. So I'll see you all in our next session. I think uh, tomorrow you have any off here? All right. Uh, anyways, I'll I'll shortly confirm. Okay, next uh, half an hour, one hour, you all will get an update about tomorrow's session. Uh, just any case, tomorrow if you are not meeting up, then uh, we'll catch up on Monday. Okay. Sunday is holy. Is it Monday? Or Monday holy. Holy. I think uh, most of the places they are celebrating on Sunday itself. <laughs> we'll, we'll come up with the plan shortly. I understand a lot of confusion is there, but we'll let you know shortly, okay? Give us like half an hour, one hour time. One hour maybe. Okay, fine then. So thanks everyone for attending today and I'll see you all in my uh, next session. Thank you. Thank you. I'm <laughs> <laughs>